All right, guys, today we're gonna check out one of the most iconic areas of Portland, Oregon, Southwest Hills. So when we talk about Southwest Portland being a little bit different than the rest of Portland, this is a perfect representation of that. We're gonna go through the different neighborhoods in Southwest Hills, take a look at the houses, talk about what it's like to live here. All that starts now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Southwest Hills in Portland, Oregon today. In this video, we're gonna check out Southwest Hills, take a look at some of the homes, what it's like living here, all that good stuff. Now, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. All right, Southwest Hills is one of many designated neighborhoods in Portland, Oregon. There are dozens of neighborhoods in Portland, in Southeast, Northeast, North Portland, Northwest Portland, and where we are today in Southwest Portland. So Southwest Hills is up in the West Hills. These are the Tualatin Mountains. There's a lot of different neighborhoods in the West Hills, some in Northwest, some in Southwest where we are today. Southwest Hills, again, is a perfect representation of not only how unique Southwest Portland is, but also what it's like living in the West Hills. You have some newer development, but a lot of old Portland homes, old construction with really iconic architecture. This is an area that is highly sought after for people who live in Portland or the Portland metro area currently, or people relocating to the Portland metro area. It's such a unique landscape. I think there are definitely some pros and cons in living in a landscape like this, in particular because you're on a hill. So we're here at Council Crest Park today, one of the greatest parks in Portland in terms of a viewpoint. This is one of uh, the great parks in Southwest Hills. We're gonna check some more out today. Um, you have views east of the Willamette River, downtown Portland. You have views west of the Tualatin Valley and Beaverton. And so this is a great spot to come up and hike around. Big open field up here, kind of at the peak, uh, but also some hiking trails around here as well. Uh, Southwest Hills has about 5,000 residents. There's about 2,000 homes. Uh, so there's definitely a fair amount of people who live here. You have some different dynamics going on where you have the east side of the hill that is basically facing downtown Portland. You have the top of the hill, uh, which like, you know, like where we are at Council Crest. And then you have the west side of the hill where you get some newer and newer development as you start to creep down into unincorporated Multnomah County and then into Washington County as well. We're gonna talk about some of the differences between being in Multnomah County and Washington County. I think a lot of people like living up here because of the landscape for sure. You're up in the trees, you're up in the hills, you have views in a lot of cases, you know, whether you're looking right at downtown Portland or not, or if you're looking west at the Tualatin Valley and some of Beaverton, you're gonna have beautiful views of tree lines and just the kind of rolling hills and landscape that you get up here. Uh, there's also a, just, again, a ton of beautiful homes. So, I mean, the homes themselves really stick out to people. There's a certain level of prestige living up here, I think for sure, living in the West Hills. Um, has uh, kind of a connotation to it, nothing that's negative. But again, I mean, this is an area uh, where you have a lot of big historic Portland homes. I think a lot of like the original, uh, you know, aristocrat class uh, in Portland, uh, you know, kind of settled up here, you know, homes up on the hill overlooking the city. So you kind of have that dynamic going on, a lot of Portland old money, that kind of stuff going on. I don't think it's an area that's gonna feel all that pretentious necessarily but again there 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 is that element of it uh for sure now some of the cons of living up here i mean you you have these winding meandering streets a lot of them don't have any shoulder so in some cases it's really really hard to even just go out and go for a walk so if you have kids you're taking your dog for a walk pushing a stroller you're gonna have to maybe drive to some of these areas where you have trails, walking trails, up to a park here like at Council Crest or the uh, Markham Nature area, or even up to Forest Park. I mean, you can get to a lot of great Portland parks from this area. You can also get into the city very easily as well. And we'll talk more about proximity to certain things, what you can get in the immediate area and what's just beyond the immediate area as well in terms of convenience. Again, looking at some more of the cons of living in the area, we talked about, uh, 
we, we talked about being kind of on these winding streets and a lot of hills uh, in particular. So driving around, walking around, you know, it's not quite as easy. This area is certainly not laid out on a grid like you have in an area that is going to be more flat. And a lot of your property can be sloped. So you might have a relatively, you know, decent sized lot. Uh, but not all of it's necessarily going to be usable. So the trade-offs there are going to be the views, right, for sure. And then, you know, you, you again, you're kind of up in the woods, up in the forest, up in the trees. It's, it's, it's really beautiful in that way. You have a lot of wildlife pros and cons there too. So, you know, you got things like coyotes and deer, for example. So those are going to be things that you need to factor in um, as far as like protecting your home, potentially protecting your pets, your plants, things like that. So definitely some pros and cons of living in the area. When you look at real estate, this is an area that's always going to hold its value pretty well. Again, because this is an area that is really in high demand and, and it's such a unique area, such a unique landscape in terms of what you can get anywhere in any city uh, in the United States. I mean, you know, this is, this is a, a very, very unique area that a lot of people are really attracted to. Price can be a big deterrent for sure. So we're gonna talk about the real estate market later in this video as well. But for now, let's go check out some homes. All right, now I'm here at Governor's Park Nature Area, which is uh, kind of a really hilly wooded space with some walking trail and hiking trails uh, right in the heart of Southwest Hills, uh, just on the east side of the hill. So looking this way, uh, it's a little bit foggy and these trees are dense, right? But you can see downtown Portland right there. So we're on the east side of the West Hills here. Again, th this neighborhood is really unique in terms of the layout and the makeup of everything, in part because you get up to the top of the hill or, or, or the crest where you have like Council Crest Park, for example, and then you get back down the west side of the hill, which has by and large a, a really different dynamic than this east side. This east side is, you know, purely like you're in Portland, you're up on the hill above downtown. Uh, you have a kind of a little more uh, quiet, little wider streets, things like that when you get to the top of the hill and then still on the back side of the hill as well. So living in Southwest Hills, you don't have shopping centers, grocery stores, things like that. Uh, down here up off Vista, just above from Goose Hollow, you have like a cafe and, and a couple shops and restaurants and things like that. So you have a little bit in terms of neighborhood entertainment, uh, but it's really, really about, uh, you know, the outdoors and the green spaces and the nature living in Southwest Hills. You can get downtown Portland, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on exactly where you're going. You can get out to Beaverton uh, very quickly. It's, it's gonna be pretty hard though to get out to the freeways, to get out to the highways and to get out of the area. So you can tack on a little bit of extra time because it's so dense in here and the trees are so, or rather the trees, <laughs> well, the trees are dense too, but the, the streets are so windy. Uh, so it's not incredibly convenient in terms of getting in and out of, but you're not getting all this through traffic either necessarily that you might get in a typical neighborhood. So, you know, you have a little bit more peace and quiet up here uh, in terms of just not being as busy of an area. It's not attracting a bunch of people coming in, you know, to go to shops and restaurants and things like that. So that's really where the trade-off is. Grocery stores too, things that you're gonna need in your day-to-day. -day. You're either getting downtown Portland or you're getting into like Cedar Mill, uh, which is further down uh, the hill uh, on on the west side, you know, getting down pretty close into Beaverton or into Cedar Hills areas like that, or other areas of Southwest Portland, like Burlingame, Fred Meyer, for example, down the hill from OHSU. So again, the the shopping, the entertainment, you know, be it grocery shopping or just malls, boutiques, things like that. There's really none of that up here, but that's probably a big reason why a lot of people like it. All right, a lot of what you can get on the east side of the hill are super skinny streets like this. So really hard to drive down, but you have this terracing up the hill and you know, these, uh, these streets are lined with homes and you get views like this. All right, so this right here used to be a thriftway. So this used to be a little grocery store 
right in the heart of Portland Heights, which is a neighborhood within Southwest Hills. There's a few little neighborhoods, kind of sub neighborhoods of Southwest Hills. Um, and Portland Heights is kind of right up Broadway, right in the middle of it. Um, you can see that uh, this is no longer, but uh, it's across from Portland Heights Park, which is another nice big green space uh, right here in Southwest Hills. So, you know, one of many areas that has some walking trails and paths and there's a basketball court and playground down here. So there's really no lack of areas to take your kids, get out, you know, get some exercise, enjoy nature you know, outside of just being able to kind of walk around on the street. Cause like I mentioned, some areas, it's you know the sidewalks are going to be able to get out and walk around some areas it's it's going to feel a little sketchy i mean again there's cars coming around sharp corners there might not be a shoulder for example so that's just something that comes with the terry uh, with the territory living in west hills southwest hills is no exception so we, when we look at real estate in southwest hills there's definitely a variety in terms of what you can get you're getting mostly larger homes so you're getting homes that are really at least 2,400 square feet up to 3,000, 3,200 square feet. It's really dense. So there's not a lot of homes up here that have large properties. Um, you know, this is an area that's been uh, developed uh, over the last 100, 120 years. I mean, there's, you know, homes get torn down and new construction goes up here and there and you can kind of see that smattered throughout. But by and large, you're getting a really dense residential. Uh, you're getting a lot of traditional style, colonial style, um, you know, Dutch colonial, you'll get Tudors, you're not getting a lot of mid-century, you're not getting a lot of modern or contemporary styles in terms of homes. You do get a little bit of that uh, with some of the stuff that's been built up on the hill, but a lot of craftsmen and really a lot of variety overall in terms of the homes that you can get. Again, one through line, one consistent trait of these, of these properties, these homes in Southwest Hills is that they are larger for sure. You can get some condos and townhomes as you get down the hill a little bit, like down Broadway, for example, uh, closer into downtown Portland. So as you get closer to the city, you can get some of those condos, but uh, really this is all primarily residential. Again, larger homes. I think it's something like 85% of the homes here are owned and occupied by owners or owner occupants. So uh, not a lot of rentals up here. This isn't an area that is necessarily full of uh, young professionals. I mean, this is a lot of um, families. I'm, I'm sure aging families, maybe some younger families. Uh, the median sale price in Southwest Hills is 1.1 million. So you can definitely get a range there. And for sure, you know, if we looked at average, it's probably going to skew higher because you can get $2 million homes, three, four, $5 million homes, uh, no doubt. And then you can get a little bit, maybe starting about 750. Uh, that's probably going to be something a little bit smaller or something with a ton of deferred maintenance, something that might need a lot of work. Uh, 750, 800, up to 900, not uncommon, uh, but really right around that one, maybe to 1.2 million mark is about what you could expect to pay living up in this area. Something I had alluded to earlier in the video was living in Portland versus living in Multnomah County, unincorporated versus living in unincorporated Washington County. So all of the neighborhood, Southwest Hills, is in Multnomah County. Most of it is in Portland city limits. As you get a little bit further west, you do break out of Portland city limits and you're in unincorporated Multnomah County. Uh, the county line hits Washington County uh, in the West Hills and areas like Cedar Mill, Raleigh Hills, um, into West Slope a little bit, uh, and over into Cedar Hills as well as you get further down the hill and into Beaverton. And uh, Washington County versus Multnomah County is gonna be some differences. There's not really gonna be a difference living in Portland proper city limits versus living in unincorporated Multnomah County. In particular, when you look at the newer income taxes that have been levied upon residents of Multnomah County, not just Portland, but Multnomah County. So unincorporated, or if you're out in Gresham, you're still paying those new income taxes. So the Multnomah County specific tax is to fund universal pre-K uh, for uh, children under five, family with, families with kids under five. So that hasn't really gone into effect yet, but the tax has. That's gonna increase in 2028. It's a tax of 1.5% on income over $125,000 or $200,000 uh, if you're married filing jointly. Uh, now it's 3%, two and a half, I believe it's 3%, so it actually doubles from one and a half to 3% for income over $250,000 uh, if you're filing single, and I think 350 married filing jointly. Point being, 
is that living in Multnomah County up here in Southwest Hills, whether you're in Portland or you're in the unincorporated area of the county, you're still subject to that uh, additional income tax, local income tax. All of Portland Metro uh, has a new tax that's also 1.5%, and I think basically on the same uh, schedule in terms of brackets, uh, that is to fund uh, services, housing, mental health counseling, uh, drug rehabilitation, things like that for, for uh, homeless people throughout the metro area. So that's Multnomah County, Washington County, and Clackamas County. Uh, you are paying a little bit of extra income tax just living in the Portland metro area as a whole. But in, in Multnomah County, um, you get hit there again uh, with that universal pre-K tax. So a lot of people who like the West Hills uh, have plenty of options. Uh, going into Washington County, mostly unincorporated Washington County, again, into areas like Raleigh Hills, which is really just west of this Southwest Hills area, Cedar Mill, which is more like west of Northwest uh, Heights, um, or uh, a lot of the Northwest District in Portland, west of Forest Park. So there's gonna be some options, uh, but I would say in Southwest Hills, I mean, this is so like quintessential West Hills living in Portland. When people think of the West Hills, this is Southwest Hills. Again, iconic architecture, these narrow winding streets, very unique, a ton of character. I mean, it's something that you can't get a true one-to-one -one comparison uh, anywhere else in the West Hills to, to, to being in Southwest Heights specifically. So I think for a lot of people, the extra income tax isn't gonna matter or the trade-off is worth it. All right, that's the video. That concludes our tour of Southwest Hills. If this is an area that looks interesting to you, if you wanna learn more about other neighborhoods that are similar to Southwest Hills, if you wanna talk more about your move to Portland and how we can help, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below the description of the video, schedule a Zoom call with us, and we can talk about your budget, your timeline, and ultimately put together a game plan for you. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching, and until next time, we'll talk to you later.